Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today have I got a monitor deal for you. This is a 27 inch 4K Ultra HD IPS display for $232. That is an incredible value for the money and the least expensive monitor of this type on the market that I can find bar none. Now this is made by a company called Scepter. It is not one of the major brands such as Acer or Asus but it does have all the right specs and all the right components. HDMI 2.0, DisplayPort. As I mentioned before, it is an IPS display. It is 4K Ultra HD. And did I mention it was only $232? I know. Now I have right now not taken this out of the box yet. I'm gonna unbox this here in a minute, but by the end of this video, it will be up and running. I will have tested it. I will have played a game on it and I will give you my honest opinion. I bought this from Amazon, and if you want to check it out, the link to Amazon will be down in the description below where you can buy it as well. If you like this review, that is an affiliate link, and those do support the channel. Thank you. In my attempt to film the unboxing of this, well, let's just say it was a bit of a mess and awkward, so we're going to skip all of that. I have the stand mounted on it. There are four screws you have to attach, but they include a screwdriver in the box. When is the last time a 200-ish dollar monitor included a screwdriver in the box? That's pretty cool. This also has the four Visa mounting screws on the back and it includes the four bolts necessary to mount a monitor arm. So if you don't wanna use the included stand and wanna mount it to either a, a fixed arm against the wall or a swivel arm or a multi-monitor mount, you can certainly do that. Standard power cable is included, two prong connection, and then the standard two pin connector that goes in the back of the monitor. The only video cable included with the monitor is an HDMI. Now I mentioned that this has HDMI 2.0 ports. However, in looking at the documentation, this is an HDMI 1.4 cable. It's not meant to drive 4K at 60 Hertz. Yeah, okay, I have to say that's a swing and a miss. Why would you sell a 4K monitor and not include a 4K cable? If you want to run over uh, HDMI, then you probably need to buy another cable. It might work in certain circumstances, but you should really get a proper cable. Or use DisplayPort. I mentioned this comes with DisplayPort, and most modern graphics cards dating back, frankly, the past several years all have a DisplayPort on them, and they're all going to work just fine 4K at a 60 hertz refresh rate. I mentioned the Visa mounting arm, very simple instructions right here. You can see this is how to mount one. The actual stand instructions are in the manual itself, which is fairly complete and includes information on the on-screen display, how to mount it and set it up, and so on. This monitor does have a one-year parts and label warranty, at least in the United States and Canada, and it's actually very nice. I have now turned the studio lights down just a bit to get rid of the glare from the front of the screen. There's still a little bit because I have some very bright lights, but you can now see the monitor running at 4K, 60 Hertz, using the included HDMI cable. It's only labeled a 1.4, but lo and behold, it worked. I thought I would give it a try. It's plugged into a GTX 1070 Ti, for those of you curious, but any of the 10 series cards will work just fine, or the recent cards from AMD, or you could, of course, always use a DisplayPort cable. Now, please note that my video camera only records 30 frames per second. So this is uh, running at 60 Hertz, and of course is actually running very smoothly on a 1070 Ti, but if it doesn't look 100% smooth to you, keep in mind that I am recording a monitor with a 30 FPS camera. What you are watching right here is the full screen raw footage. I've cut this in after. After I finished making this entire video, I sat down and worked to make some extra B-roll footage. I reconfigured my video camera for 1080p 60 frames per second. It could do 4K 30 or 1080p 60. I turned the lights off in the room. You've seen a couple of these shots edited earlier into the video, but I wanted to put some up full screen so you could see it in case you're perhaps watching this on a smaller device. This screen is absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm turning it here to the side so you can see the viewing angle. Certainly the brightness and contrast falls off a bit. This has been turned to a 45 degree angle. That's fairly sharp and most people will never look at the monitor at a 45 degree angle. I have in fairness seen a bit better viewing angles on premium monitors. My $750 studio monitors that I work with, for example, are a bit better than this, but they're also three times the price. If you're looking straight at the monitor, it's perfect in all respects. 
I'm now turning the screen around to about a 30 degree angle in the other direction. Sorry for the motion, but I just physically picked it up and turned it. It does not have a swivel base. You have to physically pick it up. It tilts forward and tilts back a bit, but otherwise it just is what it is. Now this is about a 30 degree angle and you can notice that the color and contrast is better than it when it was turned the other way at about a 45 degree angle. Have I mentioned how much I love this screen? I will be using this, by the way, on my test bench for doing benchmarks, and I'm definitely keeping this one. It is stunning in person. For $230, buy this monitor. I am now showing you the tilt that I mentioned before. This is tilted back as far as it will go. You can see it still looks very nice. It's practically pointed up to the ceiling here. Well, not quite, but it is a decent tilt back. In just a second, I'm gonna tilt it forward as far as the tilt mechanism will go, so you can see that as well. What else is there to say? It's awesome. And this is the tilt forward. This is pushed all the way forward as far as it will go. It doesn't tilt down nearly as much, maybe five degrees down, about 15 degrees back. My initial impressions of this are very, very good. For the price, I am blown away by the color and clarity. I'm now gonna spend some time playing with it. And just after the next cut, I'm gonna give you my thoughts after playing a game on it and doing some other color and brightness contrast settings with this. And welcome back. For you, that was one second. For me, that was about four hours. I played Ghost Recon Wildlands, XCOM 2, and World of Warships, probably more than I needed to because I absolutely love this game. I also live stream this game on Twitch. For those of you who watch Twitch, you can find my link to that down at the bottom of the video description below. This is amazing. I am in love. For $230, holy smokes, why buy a 1080p monitor at this point? It's about $70 more expensive than a good 27-inch 1080p monitor. Those are going to run you about $150 for a good 27-inch IPS display. Yes, you can find TN panels for less, but not with this viewing angle and color reproduction. But this is 4K. Now, one of the first objections some people will bring up is, I don't have the graphics card to play at 4K. I don't have a 1080 Ti or a 1070 Ti. I have one of the new Ryzen APUs or something less. Not a problem. 4K is exactly double the height and double the width of pixels of 1080p. Run your Windows desktop, which all the graphics, including integrated graphics, will do just fine at 4K. That will give you super sharp text, super sharp uh, fonts, menu layouts, uh, Windows resolution, and everything. On a screen of this size, running Windows itself at 150% DPI scaling but 4K will make it the sharpest screen you have ever used. Then set your games to 1080p. They will not have jaggy lines because it simply pixel doubles. It doubles the width from 1920 to 3840. That's exactly doubling the pixels. And then the vertical height is 1080p to 2160. Again, double the pixels. Now 1440p will have some jaggies and fuzziness because 1440p doesn't divide evenly into either 1080p or 4K. But if you've got, for example, a new Ryzen 5 2400G with the integrated APU and you've watched my various benchmarks, you can absolutely play games at 1080p on this screen. Set your games to 1080p, run Windows at 4K, and you've got the best of both worlds. A great deal and an amazing monitor. For 230 this is my new deal recommendation. I absolutely love it, and it's gorgeous. Beautiful colors. I had way too much fun playing on it. I really have no reason not to recommend this screen. Now, there are some more features I'm going to talk to you about here, but that's the long and short of it. I'm genuinely impressed having actually spent some time with it now. The on-screen menu is also really, really good. Frankly, it's better than a lot of the name brand monitors, so to speak. There are several buttons on the back over here, and when you press the top one, that screen comes up. You can use the arrow keys to switch between them, use the top button to select, and then there's a variety of options you can pick through. It does have a blue light mode to reduce the output of the blue light for uh, eye protection. You can set it to 10% reduction, 30% reduction, or 40% reduction. It has a real-time strategy mode. It has a first-person shooter mode for super great contrast. It increases the contrast and brightness. It has a movie mode, and then it has a user mode where you can set brightness, contrast, and colors as you wish. You can also control color temperature. It has standard, cool, and warm. You can see it goes away after a few seconds. And you can, of course, set up custom colors. It's really actually a full-featured menu. This is standard mode right here. When I push the button up, it switches to FPS mode. You saw the screen get a little bit brighter there. 
When you push it up again, that switches to real-time strategy mode and it makes it a little bit easier on the eyes for those extended gaming sessions. When you push it up again, that is movie mode. And then you've got user mode where you can customize everything. For color temperature, this is normal mode. This is warm, back to normal. And then you can set it to a cool mode. There, as I said, there are an absolute ton of adjustments in the on-screen menu. It's one of the better ones, quite frankly. Very easy to use, five buttons on the back, no issues. Here you can see the back of the monitor and we find a feature that is very rare among monitors these days. This entire top plate right here with the name on it, that's not plastic, that's metal. In fact, the majority of this monitor has a metal frame. It's actually not very lightweight, to be honest with you. The base is metal, it's not cheap plastic. I've used monitors twice this price with a cheap plastic base and a cheap plastic backing to the monitor. Wow, how is this $230? Now you can see the power connector. There is a headphone jack back here. This monitor does have built-in speakers. They're terrible. Uh, they really, they're fine for windows beeps and sounds. I did try gaming on them and that lasted for five minutes. Yeah, don't use the built-in speakers, they're, they're pretty bad. Now, you could plug headphones into this to be sure. It does receive audio via the HDMI, so if you have headphones, plug those in no problem, but the built-in speakers are, yeah. Next to it, we have a DVI port. Now, please note, that DVI port will not support 4K at 60 hertz. That really is for 1080p or perhaps 1440p, but most people are gonna skip it. Then there are two HDMI ports. I mentioned one of those is a 2.0 and one is a 1.4. What would you use the 1.4 for? A, a PlayStation or Xbox or some other device you wanna plug into this. Next to that, you're gonna see the display port. And frankly, most people should probably use the display port if you're connecting to a high-end graphics card, but the HDMI port did work fine. All of the stuff I've shown you in this video is with the cable that came with the monitor. It's labeled as a 1.4, but it worked at 4K at 60 hertz. I did verify that in the control panel. It was running at a 60 hertz refresh rate. And then finally over on that side, you can see the buttons that I was using before to show you all the various on-screen menus. Now I didn't show the base being attached. There are two screws here underneath the bottom and there's two screws on the bottom of the base. It literally took a minute to put this thing together. It could not have been easier. That included screwdriver along with the four screws included in the base goes right together. To sum it all up, this is my new favorite budget monitor. For about $70 more than a 1080p 27 inch IPS, I think to get a 4K screen with all these features, metal back, metal base, a great on-screen display, a beautiful perfect screen, no issues whatsoever. I saw no dead pixels, no stuck pixels. It's really, really nice. This thing is a screaming deal. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is not a product sample. I bought this off of Amazon and there'll be a link down in the description below. And I am pleased and happy to give this thing two enthusiastic thumbs up. It is an amazing value for the money. Come on, the rest of you monitor companies. You need to step up your game. This sets a new benchmark. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with that big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in the video description. I mentioned Twitch before. My link to my Twitch channel is down there. Twitter is down there as well. Patreon if you wish to support the channel in general. And a bunch of links to Amazon, Newegg, etc. Which are all affiliate links and they support the channel when you shop as well. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.